Then, in 1972, a very tall, sharply dressed lawyer from Cabramatta stole the show. And his message was loud and clear. The Labor Party's campaign launch at Blacktown Civic Centre was the perfect photo opportunity to capture Gough Whitlam's pop star appeal. Men and women of Australia, the decision we will make for our country on the 2nd of December is a choice between the past and the future. A single photo captured the fervour and adulation Whitlam commanded. After a generation of conservatism, this, for some, was like the second coming. The woman in the picture was a woman that I'd, I'd seen around at a lot of rallies and, and she was quite an identity. In the background is Bob Hawke and if you look closely at that picture, you notice the flash hasn't gone off. That's why it was a better picture. If the flash had gone off, it wouldn't have been such a good picture, I think. On election night, Goff and Margaret Whitman invited the media into their home to celebrate victory. After Labor's long years in the political wilderness, Prime Minister Whitlam wasted no time in unleashing a torrent of change. The show rolled on, only to be slowed by a global oil crisis in 1973. Western economies were plunged into recession. Another year and another election win later, Whitlam came up against an equally imposing figure in opposition leader Malcolm Fraser. And then Whitlam unwittingly became the architect of his own downfall by appointing as Governor General Sir John Kerr. the government was becoming accident prone. When Whitlam's new treasurer, Dr Jim Cairns, invited his attractive young friend, Junie Morosi, to join his staff, it ignited one of the country's more salacious political scandals. I'm sure that if I had been a white Anglo-Saxon male, there would have been no story at all, <laughs> because it was, after all, the first time that a woman had taken the position of principal private secretary to a senior minister, or even a minister, perhaps. The innuendo continued into the new year during the ALP's federal conference. It was held around the swimming pool at the old Florida hotel in Terrigal and everyone was sitting around the table having a beer, not golf of course, but guys like Bob Hawke, who was then the union leader. You know, they're all relaxed around the pool and there's Margaret Whitlam diving into the pool, doing a few lengths and, you know, we're sitting there taking photos and no one's caring, but the thing that was worrying Goff was that one of his ministers, Jim Cairns, there was a story going around that he was having an affair with Junie Morosi. So poor old Goff, you know, picked up the paper and there's the headlines. I heard him say, that's all we need. But this was just a taste of far worse to come for Goff Whitlam and his government. Minerals and Energy Minister Rex Connor botched up an attempt to borrow four billion US dollars from Arab financiers. He used a shady agent named Tirith Kemlani. It did not go down well. Dr Cairns was also complicit in the loans affair and Whitlam sacked him for misleading parliament. Later, Rex Connor was also sacked for continuing to deal with Kemlani. It was a series of own goals that emboldened the opposition leader, Malcolm Fraser, to seize the initiative. The coalition control Senate cut off funds to the government. 
Whitlam refused to call an election, believing Fraser would lose his nerve. The standoff polarised the country. Early in the afternoon of November 11th, 1975, the Governor-General dramatically intervened, dismissing Whitlam and his government. Proclamation by His Excellency the Governor-General of Australia. Governor-General, God save the Queen. Well may we say, God save the Queen. Because nothing will save the Governor-General. Goff always had a way with words, but for once, that wasn't enough. A snap election was called. lost the election in a landslide. It was a bitter defeat. But his legacy is far-reaching. In three tumultuous years, Gough Whitlam transformed the country on many different stages, creating his own living legend in the process. I photographed him a few years back in front of the Sydney Opera House. He said one icon in front of another icon. And, uh, and, uh, and I told him, I said, I took that picture out in 97. He said, you're the one who took that picture, eh? <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, I quite like that picture. I quite like that picture. 